Hey there draft fans, it is LB3 back again with another draft profile video. In our last video we took a look at Arizona State wide receiver Brandon Ayuk, and in the video before that we took a look at Baylor wide receiver Denzel Mims. If you haven't seen either of those videos, be sure to head back and check them out. For this video we are breaking out of that wide receiver run, and taking a look at one of the most polarizing, hardest to pin prospects, in Mississippi State linebacker Willie Gay Jr. We will get into why he is so polarizing a bit later, but let's kick off this video and take a look at Gay and try to figure out where he should go in the 2020 NFL Draft. To get started with Gay, we will be taking a look at his athletic profile using Player Profiler. If you have any questions about some of their stuff, I explained it in the Denzel Mims video, so go check it out. Looking at Gay specifically, the first thing you notice is how complete of an athlete he is. A lot of linebackers that test very well as athletes like Gay are also very small for their size, but Gay even has good size at 6'1", 240 pounds. That makes his performance in both the 40-yard dash, where he ran a 4.46, and the explosive drills, the jumps, where he jumped above 90th percentile on each, all the more impressive. He did not do quite as good in the agility drills, but he still did around average in both, which combined with the rest of his drills is very impressive. He's a rare linebacker with the ability to play completely sideline to sideline in the modern NFL. Not only did he test like that, I would say that his on-field athleticism matches up to his testing. A great athletic profile that has a lot of people very excited about his potential. Now we are done talking about his athleticism, let's move on to his strengths and weaknesses. Gay is a prospect with a lot of up and down in his play, so defining exactly what makes him so tantalizing, but at the same time concerning, can be very difficult, but I will do my very best. The first strength that we are taking a look at is something that is obvious when you watch him play, and ties in well with his athleticism that we were just talking about, and that is that he is an absolute missile on the field. Gay is extremely explosive and fast. While this showed up the most on blitzes, you still see it occasionally in outside runs and pass coverage situations. Taking a look at the first two plays there from his 2018 game against Alabama, which is a great game to watch to get a good feel for his ups and downs. On these two plays, he blitzes, and Tua, who is generally good at evading pressure, is clearly just stunned with how quickly Gay can close, even though in the first one he doesn't uh, finish. And then on the last play against Louisville in 2018, he jumps forward to the line, but after the ball is thrown, he doesn't stop playing and is able to fly in and stop the wide receiver before any more yards are gained. The next strength that we are taking a look at is his tackling ability, which overall I would say is good. For someone that has struggles with some other technical things, and as someone who plays with their hair on fire a bit, I would expect someone who misses or bounces off a lot of tackles. However, when watching Gay, you generally see that if he is in a position to make a tackle, he will make it. And generally, we thought that he didn't get too many yards after contact. He has a lot of power in his hits and generally wraps well, and I was glad I didn't see him drop his head too much, even when going in for the big hits. What you'll see in these two clips that I have is that I really liked how he focused on getting his arms out and around a player and then focuses on holding on. That some linebackers seem so hesitant to use their arms, and that's not him. The next strength that we are taking a look at is his solid awareness and aggression. And while I'm going to bring up something about this in the weaknesses as well, I want to bring it up in the strengths first. I mentioned earlier that Gay plays with his hair on fire, and for anyone that doesn't know, what that generally means is he plays as someone with a lot of urgency that is also kind of moving around the field, not necessarily randomly, but very phonetically, with not as much direction as one should. Generally, Gay has solid ability to read some plays, get in the position he needs to be, and make a play. He also trusts in his instincts and won't hesitate too much when opportunity presents itself. The three plays that I have as examples here are all generally something that is used to fool the defender with fake handoffs to the running backs on the first two plays. Gay is able to quickly read each of them, and after confirming that Tua has the ball, quickly flies towards him and shuts down the play. The final play is a screen where a linebacker is not supposed to be able to get there in time to disrupt it, but Gay was very adept at stopping wide receiver screens in college, demonstrating his awareness and athleticism. The final strength is his at minimum small amount of experience in zone coverage. Unlike someone like a Kenneth Murray, Gay at least has some semblance of past coverage experience in college. He was never asked to do much, but he would drop back at times patrolling shallow zones and generally doing a good job watching the quarterback's eyes. Occasionally he would be asked to stick with tight ends and running backs, but rarely. Although he would, did do well at that when asked to, he has flashes here that suggest the possibility of being good in coverage, but still isn't a big enough sample size. The first play is like I mentioned, play where he just sticks with Alabama tight end Er Smith on an out route to the sideline. Simple, but effective. The second play, which is two clips at two different angles, he fakes the blitz and then drops back, the entire time keeping an eye on Tua and where he wants to throw it. Tua lets loose, and Gay, being the freak athlete that he is, is able to leap up and catch it. It's certainly not an easy catch. I like how well he's able to keep an eye on Tua in this play, read his eyes, and so well able to time his jump to grab the ball out of the air. 
Now that we are finished with the strengths, we will move on to the weaknesses. And as it is so many times with me, we will see some of the promising strengths reflected back negatively in the weaknesses. The first weakness that we are taking a look at is his overaggression and propensity to misjudge angles. Earlier in the strengths, as I hinted at, as I talked about his aggression as a strength, he's also overly reliant on his instincts and athleticism to cover up for some bad decisions, and it puts him into spots that he can't bail himself out of. It's only going to get worse as he moves into the pros. Obviously, I don't always know his gap responsibilities in the play, so I can't always make a judgment. But there are clear plays where he trusts in his gut or athleticism too much and gets out right at the edge or fills the wrong hole, allowing a big run to be broken. I only have one clip of this in this specific one, but look at the other weaknesses or even some of the strengths, and you'll see other examples of it. In this one clip, we see he gets clipped, but overall, he still took a bad angle to try and stop the running back on his way to the sideline. The next weakness that we are going to take a look at is something with how he takes on blocks. While he is a stout linebacker with a lot of weight and power behind him, he still needs to work on his technique for taking on blocks. His general technique for taking on blocks is trying to just lower his shoulder and blow through it. And while sometimes it works, and I in general like the strategy more than trying to go around it, it still gets him in trouble. He has an occasional spin move, but it's sloppy and rarely used. He needs to get his hands more involved with taking on blocks and be prepared to meet the blocker at times instead of just trying to blast through them because it's not always the right reaction. In this first play, he gets engaged by tight end Irv Smith, not even an offensive lineman, but he just never even tries to get leverage and is just pushed straight backwards. In the next play, he needs to maintain outside leverage to help prevent outside runs, but allows himself to be locked in. And the third and final clip, what you'll see is what he does for a spin move, which in a crowded area, a slow spin move that exposes your back to the offensive lineman for so long is just asking for trouble. The third weakness that we are taking a look at is ties back in with the amount of zone coverage experience he had in college which is the fact that he was largely a downhill player in college, which means that he was not only not working back in coverage, he was working towards the quarterback. Not many college linebackers are spending a ton of snaps in co college in coverage, so this isn't necessarily a knock against just gay. But a lot of plays, he's either in run defense or blitzing it much more rarely. He's dropping back into zones or covering guys one-on-one. -on -one. For this one, all I included was a pass play where he blitzes, which is what he does on a lot of pass plays. You'll also notice how bad his technique is on taking on this block. The final weakness is one that I am only kind of comfortable talking about and is something that I also can't have any clips for, and that is his off-the-field question marks. Obviously, I've never spoken personally to Gay or the people with the Mississippi State program, but he was suspended for most of the season for academic reasons, and then, while it was never definitively said who did it, that I'm aware of at least, there are also strong implications by people close to the program that Gay was the player that punched the Mississippi State quarterback at the time in the face. While this won't change my grade personally because I don't really have enough information, I think is it worth making a mark uh, next to his name and keeping it in mind while we know that teams will have a lot more information about it than any fans or reporters or draft experts could. So keep that in mind. Now we are all done with the strengths and weaknesses, and I am not doing any comparisons this year. So let's go ahead and move on to my overall thoughts about Gay in particular, how I think he fits in as a rookie, and where he should go in the draft. Gay, on paper is a perfect example of the new prototype of NFL linebacker at 6'1", 240, insane athleticism. Uh, and just based off of that, it wouldn't surprise me if he went in the round one, even top 20 or so. Even ignoring off-field stuff, though, there are a lot of concerns in regards to his overall play. He's not a Malik Jefferson from a couple years ago who, coming out as an athletic freak, just had no sense for the position. He has instincts, and he shows it. But for every amazing play that you get from Gay, you'll get, be getting another boneheaded mistake for at least... The first couple of years, unless he does a, a lot of growing a lot quicker than most players do. Based on what he brings and balancing out with the risks, though, I think it would be fair value for Gay to go somewhere in the 30 to 50 range. Someone ideally taking him with their second pick feels a bit better than investing a first rounder in a player whose play fluctuates so wildly and so rapidly. I like Gay, but you need to be aware of the player you will be getting when you draft him. For anyone who listened and enjoyed, make sure to subscribe as there will be a lot more of these videos coming. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to respond to everyone. The fact that I did gay was decided by the poll, and after him, I decided to do the number two and three vote getters as it was very close. So next, so my video will be on Penn State wide receiver KJ Hamler. So be sure to keep your eyes out for that video, which should be coming in the next 24 hours or so. In that video, I will also hopefully include a poll in that description uh, for the players I would do after Del Pitt. So keep an eye out for all of that. Thank you very much. This has been LB3 Scouting. There will be a lot more great stuff coming.